talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right, without further ado, let's bring them out. The cast of Better Call Saul. There's Mr. Bob Odenkirk, Mr. Mike McKeon, and Mr. Jonathan Banks, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Take a seat, wherever you like. We're going to, uh, guys, we're going to take some questions from you guys in just a little bit, because I know you'd love to ask them some questions. We're going to show you some clips from the show. It's going to be very cool. Uh, so we're going to get into all that. But first, I'm going I'm to steal you guys for a little bit and, and talk to you about the show. And I think, really, when we first heard about this spinoff, I think the question a lot of us had, knowing this character... Um, was what's the tone of the show going to be? Because he's, you know, he's a goofy guy. Uh, he sort of came in almost as a little at first as a little comic relief and then sort of grew uh, to a more fleshed out character. So how would you Not guys... Not that much more fleshed <laughs> out. A little bit, but a little bit as it went on. But uh, yeah, so how would you describe to people who haven't seen well, this, the tone of the first of all, assault? everyone asked that question. Pretty much any question you have about the show was how we started. The same questions we all asked. Um, but Vince and Peter, who created the show, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, uh, talked to me about they would maybe make a half-hour comedy, you know? And, and because the show is owned by Sony, they were like, maybe it won't even live on AMC. Maybe it'll be something that belongs somewhere else. But then as they developed the story and brainstormed, it became a show that belongs exactly where it belongs on AMC and that is a drama a drama at its core but has <clears throat> has a comic tone <clears throat> I mean my character does not have a terminal illness which is how breaking bad starts and uh, I I have the only thing wrong with him is he he doesn't know what he should be doing with himself and he's some uh, might say the law is a terminal illness though. yeah to be to be a lawyer is yeah a he has answer. that whatever that disease is, um, but it's it's a lighter it's just lighter overall because there's not that that darkness at the core, uh, but then it's very dramatic and uh, Vince and Peter have a certain area they work in and Vince is obviously very interested in uh, transformation of a human being a person becoming fundamentally different from what they are when you meet them and, and how challenging that is for someone to do that. And so here we have a character and he's transforming into something you've already seen. So that's kind of interesting. You're going to a point that we all know of, sort of. And uh, Well, that's interesting. I, mean, I, how I don't know if I answered your question, but it is it is a lighter show than breaking. You back. sort of canceled well, the question, uh, but eventually, I eventually I will bring you your darkness. <laughs> it's true, actually. <laughs> well, how is how is? I mean, you're not even playing Saul Goodman here. You're playing Jimmy McGill. Well, you're playing a Saul Goodman was James McGill. Right. He told Walter White that right. the first time he met him. Um, but how is he different? How is he? We're seeing him at an earlier stage. We know. Yeah, I know, but different. really. Everybody in their lives presents themselves to the people at their work. Wherever they're going, they present a version of themselves. And uh, this guy is just... Have you ever seen Kiss? Oh, yeah. That's not who they really are. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't born that way with no. the makeup and the fire coming One is out. not a cat from the planet Mars. <laughs> but maybe they should have. <laughs> no. Remember when Very they cleaned like... up for about three years? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> you turned 45 and you stopped wearing makeup? I mean, uh, <laughs> very affectionate. About you. So, you know, I, it's, it's a persona, Saul Goodman. The office is a facade. You know, uh, it's a bit of a show he's putting on to attract a certain clientele. But even in that, you know it's not who he really is. And, and it's true of of I think many people that they're a different person in their private life and with their family and Michael plays my brother so there's family relationship going on here than they are to the public so you just saw the slightest veneer of who this guy is in Saul Goodman. Uh, a lot of people really want to see it would be really fun to see once they heard that Jonathan was going to come back playing Mike, well, oh, we're going to see how these guys first got connected, how they first met up and, and formed this uh, 
uh, dysfunctional relationship. Uh, we are going to see that in the show. And in fact, we are going to see that right now. We're going to take a clip of that. And why do you think it's dysfunctional? Oh, I think it's perfect. <laughs> let's take he a hates that word. Yeah. You, let's look at this clip and see if you think it's dysfunctional. Check it out. Albuquerque, yeah. New Mexico. Look at that sky. Wait a second. Beautiful sky. Let's hear it for the Suzuki Esteem. Yeah, sweet ride, man. Nice ride. Some killer wheels, wheels. you're rocking there. So much fun to drive. Bobby, Bobby almost, I, I can't believe we still, would we have three? Four, three I think you have four of them. One of them was and gutted was, and turned into a, like, And I did, I'm surprised right, any right, of right. them made it through. If you ask him to drive the car from here to the wall, there was a screeching of brakes. There was a slamming of because things Because when else on. in your life are you given a real car, not a go-kart, and, and there's, if the street is locked down, no one's allowed to drive, there's Kinda. stuntmen, there's security, there's nurses and doctors waiting nearby... And you're told to go from here to there. You're going to gun it yeah. every fucking time. Yeah. Like, but you had to gun that car and, to make and, it move at all. And that's Bob's perception. The crew's perception was, Jesus Christ, he's in the car again. <laughs> it's true. But it's, come on. Imagine, they put you behind the wheel of a car. It's a little piece of shit. They've got three more of them painted exactly the same. You have a construction place you're going to drive to that's very clearly defined everything is locked down no one will ever walk in front of you yeah that's nice bobby it's fucking you're gonna hit it every time i promise you i sat behind the wheel thinking should i drive reasonably this time no you have to do that all the time it's phony baloney movie stuff Okay, I'm just making sure you're done. You want to talk about the car some more? I love it so much. <laughs> you do. The I car's do. a star, guys. <laughs> kind of like Benji. Remember Benji the yeah. dog? It's kind of like that kind of car. Yeah, we ran it's him a over. Benji car. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, so, Jonathan, how is, how is uh, Mike different? Doesn't seem that different right there from what we saw. Nope. Next question. Not at all, right? <laughs> No, I mean, Mike has a hard edge. We've said this now. We've been doing a lot of interviews, guys, and it's, it's hard to be original. We like you best. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike has a hard edge, and even in prequels, there can be a prequel within the prequel. So you're going to learn a lot about Mike, a lot about yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike there's some away. amazing Mike material in here, some incredibly heavy, dramatic stuff. I, I just said how this show is generally a lighter tone than Breaking Bad, but there's there's a sequence uh, particular that's super heavy duty. That they brought in another actor for, and so he could do it. No. I, uh, I, this guy. I, apparently this guy. I do it. Yeah. I could have used a better laugh than that guy. I really could You want to say it again? You want us to... No, yeah, that always works. Uh, let's talk also about the other relationship we have here, which is not just the relationship between um, between uh, James and uh, obviously um, Mike, but between him and his brother, Michael uh, McKeon, playing uh, playing his older brother. Really interesting sibling dynamic here. Uh, why don't we watch a clip first? Yes, we're going to okay. show you another clip from Better Call Good, Saul. Yeah. You guys are so lucky. To see Rolling this stuff, it. unbelievable. I want to see it. I know. We're going to watch the clip. Who knows? Maybe Jonathan's going to turn his chair around. We don't know what's going to happen. Not we're going to turn, watch the clip, and then we'll talk about it. Only if I'm in it. That's all. Right, all. How about I that? I want to see the rest of it. I know. I want to see the whole thing again. There's more to that, okay. right? Hey, it doesn't Jesus. end there. Okay. No. We That's do, the whole we do show? go on. That's it. That's it. It's like a web episode. first episode? It's like a web yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. There's almost a religious tone to that. It's just like your mother telling you you should go to Mass. You know, there are people out there that do. It really is. Has anyone in this audience ever been the more successful sibling of anyone? You know how the rest of your family likes to talk to you about, could you do something about Steve? Can you, can you pass on whatever brilliant thing got you through high school or through college or through that shitty job and do a better job or away from those substances or whatever? You know, those, you are the ones that your parents come to, and that's what Jimmy, that's what Jimmy was to me. And is he that was, who you were, Michael? Uh, no, well, eh, I don't want to talk about that. About it? But, but there is that relationship in the world where one, where there's one golden child who gets everything right and gets through uh, law school at 23, and then there's this guy I have to keep bailing Fuck out up. of jail. This 
ne'er do well, and I love fucker. him. I love him. He was a he, when he was a little baby, he was awesome. But then he became this huge pain in the ass, and that's the kind of relationship that's on kind of on paper. But it's something we really do have something else going on there because, as you can't tell from this clip. I am now no longer on top of the world. The world is on top of me, and this is my lifeline here. So it's a complicated relationship, like most human relationships. I just like to say, as the prodigal son, that my <laughs> philosophy always was that anybody can do six months easy in Memphis County. <laughs> I, my mother has that embroidered on the <laughs> living room wall. But it is some cool re relationship scenes between you guys. I think you just hit it right on the head, Michael, where you, 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 know, you see these scenes, and now he's in the... It's a total role reversal, at least we're going to perhaps see, in terms of now you being a guy that's always had it together, and now he's got to sort of take care yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I, there are no total role reversals, right. but this one is <laughs> handled by two, two, and no, many, many brilliant writers. But Peter and and uh, and Vince, so we keep everybody knows. Better start they mentioning are. Tom Schnoz. Oh, or you we betcha. are going to yeah. be in big trouble. We're insanely lucky as as far as writing. The directors have all been phenomenal. Uh, Arthur Albert, our cinematographer, ridiculous. I mean, these are just this is top top drawer stuff. Very proud. A lot of Breaking Bad people working on this show. Crew, across the board, uh, all the production people, and a lot of the writers, most of the writers. Yeah, and how much as you have a lot of the Breaking Bad crew, obviously you're still in Albuquerque and you have some of the same characters, how much do you guys talk about, all right, we want to we want to use these same locations maybe that people have seen before. We want to completely stay away from that well, stuff or maybe an Easter egg here. There. We don't talk about it at all because it's all written in the script, but they clearly do talk about it. I, uh, in um, one of the promos, you see a, a diner that appeared in Breaking Bad that I use as somewhat of an office. Uh, there's just... there's. You know, people who haven't seen Breaking Bad can enjoy this show and they won't be missing anything uh, crucial to understand the story. But if you've seen Breaking Bad, it's just going to be filled with little touches, references, reminiscent uh, places uh, to Breaking Bad without ever being a wink. I mean, they don't ever do it as like, we got to get another Breaking Bad reference, and it's been two minutes on screen. But it's just everywhere. It just is. I mean, uh, they, these guys write tight stories, and they tighten them down as they rewrite them. And they fit those things in and find those connections. And so that story is just going to be, for people who've watched Breaking Bad, our little story, a kind of a side story, is going to be a richer story for it. It sounds like such a slam dunk role for you in the sense of, okay, we're going to break your character out off of what many people consider the best drama ever. You get to have this whole role. It's, you know, your character. But it wasn't a slam dunk for you, was it? Because you've got family. Uh, men well, making the choice concerns. to do the job was, uh, well, there's first, there's the intimidation of we're coming off maybe one of the best shows ever. And do you really want to try to extend any aspect of that and risk, I guess, bothering people's love for, for the original. I mean, I think they've made something so original here that you very quickly stop um, thinking about why or how it is similar or dissimilar. You just start to accept this for its own values and choices and merits. I, they hit the ground running with this show, Vincent Peter. And by doing that, I, I really believe, and you guys, I guess, will read or hear some feedback over time, but I think it throws you off. Have you seen episodes? You've seen three, three right? First three. I mean, I think it really kind of uh, disengages your ability to compare. You just stop. you got too much to pay attention to. It's like, if I'm going to enjoy this, I better just start watching it <laughs> instead of asking myself, Wait, is this like Breaking Bad or that less like Breaking Bad? You Am just, I enjoying this? Yeah. That's what I keep asking. I mean, right, I honestly, and I've <laughs> no idea. I, I really think it's it's disarming what they've written, which is a show with a show with integrity and uh, a complexity. But it's so, it's, it's another it's another story. You're, again, you know, we we lionize our, our our writers, 
and their and their writers are so good. It's certainly not a. And I stand way on the outside in the beginning of this, and I watch what Bob's doing. I watch what Michael and Ray and Patrick and, and, and Michael Mondo are doing. And but Bobby had a, a load, but it is an entirely. It's a different rhythm. It's a different story by really great writers, and I, you know, I am a cheerleader. But you're in for a treat. You're in for a real treat. Well, anyways, the, I agree, and uh, I. But I did have a hard time making the choice because when they did settle on Albuquerque, when they first started talking about it, they talked about maybe it'll be a half-hour sitcom kind of jokey thing, and set shot in L.A. and he's got a different case every week and. You know, it could have been anything almost. Um, at least that's how they presented it to me. I think Vince is always thinking on a deeper level and kind of pretending like, I think there's a little bit of a... Reel you in? Yeah, it's a little bit of a, I don't know what I'm doing, man. I don't work hard. I don't know how to write. How do you spell words? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a little bit like you know what you're doing, and and and, um, and he did have an idea for this show. He had a he had a, a it wasn't just let's just do something with Saul Goodman. He had the question of how does somebody become that guy? Yeah. Who is the person behind the facade? That was what he had a hold of, and that kind of nagged at him. So, anyways, I did have an issue with actually leaving my family my family was great about it i talked to my kids and they both made me feel good about making the choice to go and and they handled it really well so that was the biggest issue for me was having to leave uh, the family but once they i mean they're fucking teenagers they couldn't wait to get me out of the house they were like <laughs> they were calling vince that. behind my back <laughs> mr gilligan this is Nathan Odenkirk. Please write that show for my dad. It has to be set in Albuquerque. There's no way you could... Hour long, please. Uh, <laughs> and, and my family, my wife said, you either get your sorry ass out of this house and take that job or I'm going to cut you from chin to navel. <laughs> so uh, once we got past that, we got down there and got to work. And it's, it's interesting because uh, you said, Jonathan, how the show has a different rhythm, but you guys must have, I assume, some sort of working rhythm in the sense that a lot of the same crew, some same actors, same writers, but Michael, this is, you're the newcomer in that sense. Did you feel like you had to sort of adapt to their rhythm at all, that maybe they had a working uh, language uh, that you had to sort of adapt to at all? No, no, because it's, 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 it was just an ins extremely efficient, extremely nice, extremely smart and funny crew. And it was like you step into that and you go... It's like a warm bath, and you should have been doing this a long time. I mean, when and you ask that question, I just want to point out that we had extra time for the first episode. And, that's right. And so we used that time to get acclimated and to rehearse. Yeah. On yeah. sets and stuff. And it, which is a huge luxury, and it was, it's, it was a fabulous experience. Is, is there a time where you guys are, it could be this show or any other show, maybe sometimes there's a time when you know a show's clicking. It might not be right at the first point. It could be episode six or eight of a show. It could be way later when you see it. Was there ever a point that you guys can think of where you said, you know what, this is really working? Like, I, I saw it on the page, and I thought it would be great, but now that I see it coming together. You know, you, what you're talking about is something I did feel on Fargo, uh, where we were really unsure of yeah, it, and then yeah. somewhere about four weeks in, you could feel everyone getting a little giddy about, this is really great fun and feels good. Um, this show is so different from episode to episode. I think we all could respect and feel the integrity of the writing and the depth of the writing, and that that was... But even I haven't taken this show in yet. There's more going on here, and and... What, I, what feels good to me is that some of the producers who've seen all the episodes are giddy, which is a great sign, because these are not giddy people, I promise you. Uh, and, and they also have said that every episode is a different vibe from the previous one. But I don't think it feels like a kitchen sink. It feels like a story that jumps through this prism of different, you know, it's a little a, funnier, a little sadder, dark, you know, just different. Uh, it's a shadings. great story, and Bobby, and Bobby, uh, Bobby underestimates himself. He 
had a workload like I have never seen any actor in film carry ever before. Saul's a mouthy character. Jimmy's a mouthy character. And so when you write to that character, you write vast monologues, one after another after another. And he's talking the whole time. Now, for me, I'm standing there, I'm thinking the ghosts are still out there. And ghosts that I love. You know, is Brian going to walk around the corner on the soundstage, Aaron and Anna and Dean and Betsy and RJ and Giancarlo Esposito? And, and for me, it was around the third show that I was watching what was going on. And I thought, oh, this is good. This is pretty good. And then, you know, you're involved in something. You're not so quick to say something is good. But we saw the premiere. And I looked, and Bobby was sitting in front of me, and I thought, oh, my God, this is really good. So, Mr. Kirk. Well, we'll see. Let's, let's let you guys I judge. did see. I, I saw, I, I, and, I, I, and you're going to like it. I'm, I'm, listen, I, I want to say, I, I say in regards to this, I, I, you can tell we're excited about our show, and, and I'm so thankful at the positive response I've heard from people who've seen it, and that's great. Uh, yeah, but people have been very upbeat and willing to consider this, uh, the possibility that we made something worthwhile here. And I really appreciate it. And I, and I, and I think that I promise you that Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould uh, made this with utter honesty and uh, their best effort. I think we have a few questions now. All right, Bob, you've worked in TV for a while now, and now that, like, the whole medium Two of it... Two years. <laughs> well, haven't you written for, like, SNL and a bunch of shows yeah, back I've, then? Yeah, uh, yes. Well, now that the whole thing... 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> whole Somewhere while. in between there. But now with the whole, like, landscape of TV changing with, like, Netflix, YouTube, and the whole internet thing, is there anything you think can, like, keep TV relevant, especially with shows like this? I think TV's never been more relevant. I think TV's... Uh, it's, been said for years now it's a golden age it really is these are amazing shows what was that show you were telling me about michael oh the uh, fall is everybody the fall? into the, the fall yes holy shit Jordan anderson yeah. <coughs> we watched feels the last like I, episode last night and feels we're still, like i we're hear dizzy. about We've an been amazing all day. show yeah. oh it's awesome yeah but i mean the the the, the real difference is that, that there's tv that you can watch all in a swallow you can do all that binging and, and catching up thing but there's also something about when the network says you can see this show now. Because then, it, as far as, the, as this is what I was hearing uh, uh, last time I was with a, a bunch of suits, and they were saying that that's really, that it's that water cooler Monday morning thing that, that it, you don't really get with the binge watching, you know? So, so it's, it, I think it'll stay relevant in that way. Stinginess and um, cowardice will keep it going. But, <laughs> no, as far as the networks go, they're doing fine with The Biggest Loser. They're doing fine with, you know, The Bachelor. I mean, they, they don't worry about it. There will always be TV. But there's great stuff happening everywhere. I really think it's as good as it's ever been in my life. Yeah. And there's more sketch shows, too, which makes me happy. Yes. Uh, so, Bob, did you wish that you were on the last episode of Breaking Bad, maybe help out Walter White in some way? Wouldn't it have been nice? He needed help. <laughs> and yet... <laughs> no, he did. I, I don't know. He did. I, I, was, I was on the second to last. I hear you. You mean like, uh, like he's lying on the floor and the camera's going up and then you see Paul, Saul pull up and run in and <laughs> give him CPR. Oxygen mask. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't I don't look at the opportunity that they gave me that way. I I thankful to be a part of it in any way they had me. I was glad to be in that show. But <laughs> thanks. Yep. Hi, thanks for being here, guys. Um my question's for Bob. When Vince presented you with this idea of going on this journey with Saul, did you want to do anything in particular with the character, or did you just want to go along the journey with what Vince had in mind? Is there anything? Yeah, I don't have. I love the opportunity that Breaking Bad gave me and that this gave me to act and not be in charge. Uh, it's a wonderful, it frees you up. And you can commit to the part in the moment, and you don't have to think about the choices that were made that got you there. Or you have, you feel, I feel no responsibility for guiding the story. 
I only need to play this guy each time, you know, I'm playing the scene and nothing more. I don't have to worry about any other aspect of this show. And it's been great and it's made me a better actor. So I wanted to keep that up. So I told Peter and Vince, I don't have anything to say, but the one thing I did say was, I, uh, from my point of view, and you can do whatever you want, I think you should beat the living shit out of this guy because I think he's really funny and fun to watch when he's in pain or in trouble. <laughs> and I meant it, and I said it more than once, and then they seemed, I guess they agreed because <laughs> when I was down there getting the shit kicked out of me, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, remember when I said that? <laughs> right. Okay. All right. We get, we get back on my knees in the desert. <laughs> you know, I mean, they really took that to heart, which I'm glad they did. It is fun. He is funny, fun to watch when he's in a hot spot. Uh, are you guys using a lot of like weird camera angles, like in Breaking Bad, yeah, like, uh, like on shovels and stuff? Bulletproof uh, cameras. This kid, there this kid sounds like he's from California, though. Camera. I mean, you have yet to use the word "dude." You sound like one of my kids. Like, hey man, uh, <laughs> I knew that's uh, why I yes, gravitated they, toward you. They've made very uh, cool choices with the filmmaking, but it's different from Breaking Bad. Uh, they've got rules and ideas uh, about this world and they I don't want to no, I don't want to give anything away but there's a certain camera move that they do uh, right. that you never you haven't seen for a while but these are great cinematographers Mark, uh, you now going back to our cousins with Michael Slovis and Breaking Bad but now Arthur oh my god Arthur's so good you're talking about a great cinematographer yeah yeah, so there's some interesting choices here, and it's different from Breaking Bad in its shooting style, but they're very conscious choices and L less handheld, right? Like, uh, yes, yeah. And also, they do. Um, uh, I mean, I don't know. If I can say they'll shit, find I mean, out. They'll find out soon enough. I mean, they'll find you, out Sunday night. Whatever. I thought he was. They a use <laughs> a zoom lens that, <laughs> but they use it very cool. Hi. Um, Sorry about this, Bob, but... Uh, <laughs> it's really good. But I'm your son. <laughs> um, Jonathan, um, you're my favorite actor, and I made a picture of you, and I was hoping that you could sign it. Can I you? No, get out of here. That. Go on, I, go on, somebody. I, I don't have a problem with that. Of course I'll sign it, my dear. I'd just like to point out that... The T-shirt he's got on, too, guys. Check out the T-shirt. I'm a favorite of... Of children, ah, yeah. I've done. Oh my God, he made a picture. It's so, it's brilliant. so good. He okay. drew this. You know what? I can Ian. I can usually be a smart ass about most stuff, but I got to tell you, you touch me. You really do. It's spelled J O N. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up after he signs it. So they can all see it, man. Thanks, man. So what we wrote down here was to Ian. Your pal, Jonathan Banks. How about that, guys? Right? So, Ian, I'm your favorite actor. I got to tell you something. You're my favorite kid. Thank you so much. All right. Well, you can't top that, ladies no. and gentlemen. That's a, that's a game ender right Thanks again, everybody. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you thanks. all of you. Take care. Have a good one.